Hello everyone, in this video we are going to solve problem number 48 from the second chapter of Engineering Mechanics book, The Statics Part by R.C. Hippler. In this problem we are being given with the three forces which act on this bracket. We are being asked to determine the magnitude and direction of F1 force so that this resultant force is directed along the positive x dash axis and has a magnitude of 800 Newton force. So these three forces F1, F2 and F3 are making a resultant force and this resultant force is acting along this direction and that has a magnitude of 800 Newton force. So this is resultant actually. So let's solve this problem. So considering this bracket where we are being given with these forces, we are being asked to determine this F1 force and this theta angle. The resultant is directed along this x dash axis and has an a magnitude of 800 newton. We know that the x component of resultant force is equal to the summation of the x component of forces which are making this resultant of 800 newton. It means all the forces acting along x direction. So x component of resultant force would be magnitude multiplied by since we are being given with uh, the 60 degree that makes an angle with y axis so instead of cos we will be having sine 60 degree so this will be equal to the x component of all the forces which makes this resultant of 800 newton so x component of f1 since we don't know the magnitude so we'll just write f1 and uh, the direction will be actually if we measure from x-axis so this will be the direction if we measure from y-axis so this will be the direction so let's measure since we are measuring the angle for resultant from the y-axis so we will also measure angle from y-axis as well so again we will be having sine theta then so angle would actually be theta plus 60 how about the other forces since f2 is directed along positive y-axis so there won't be any x component of f2 but f3 is directed in this quadrant so it will have x component since the x component will be directed along negative x-axis so negative the magnitude is 180 now we are not being given with the angle but we are being given with this right angle triangle where the base is 12 perpendicular is 5 and hypotenuse is 13 so if you are measuring this angle this will be the angle with the x-axis so we will be using cos then and looking at this right angle triangle the cos is actually equal to cos theta let's say not theta theta is already being taken here so let's say alpha so this cos alpha would be equal to this angle actually and uh, where the base is 12 and hypotenuse is 13 so 12 divided by 13 so this 12 divided by 13 will actually be multiplied with 180 in order to have the x component of f3 force now in this equation we have f1 and theta as variable so keeping this as one at one side so f1 sine theta plus 60 degrees would be equal to this is negative value so shifting on the other side it will become positive so this value and the value that we will obtain from this will be added so on adding them together we are going to get 858.97 so let's say this is equation number one moving further in a similar way, the y component of the resultant force would be equal to the summation of y components of all the forces making this resultant of 800 Newton. So y component of uh, resultant would be 800. Now cos 60 degree. The y component of F1 would be F1 cos 60 plus theta. Since F2 is directed along positive y axis, so the y component will then be actually 200 Newton positive because it's, it's directed along positive y axis. In a similar way, the y component of F3 force would be also directed along positive y axis, hence positive. Magnitude is 180. And now, if we are using this alpha angle, then we will be using sine alpha. And sine alpha here would be perpendicular upon hypotenuse, so perpendicular is 5 hypotenuse is 13 so state of sine alpha we will be having 5 over 13 
Now keeping this f1 cos 60 plus theta at one side because this is the one where we have unknown variables. So f1 cos 60 plus theta equal to now these two are positive on this side. So shifting on the other side will become negative. And on doing simplification, we are going to get 130.769. Let's say this is equation number two. Now we have two equations. The equation one, which is F1 sine 60 degree plus theta equal to 858.97. We have equation two, which is F1 cos 60 degree plus theta equal to 130.769. Now if we divide equation one by equation two, then what we are going to get F1 and F1 will get cancelled. The angle for both sine and cos is same. So this can be converted to 10 because sine or cos is equal to 10. So 10 60 degree plus theta would be equal to if we divide this value with this value then we are going to get 6.56. Now taking 10 inverse we are going to get 81.34 degrees. So from here we can get theta as 21.5 degrees. This is one of the answer. We just got theta of 21.34. Now we also need to determine the magnitude of this F1 force. So this can sim be simply calculated by putting in any equation, let's say equation 1 or equation 2. So if we place let's say in equation number 1, then this F1 sine 81.34 equal to 858.97. So on simplifying, we are going to get the value of F1 from here and the value would be 860. 9 newton this is another answer so now we have determined theta as well as magnitude of f1 force the direction as well as the magnitude of f1 force so this is how we can solve this problem where we are being given with the resultant and its direction along with the magnitude of two other forces magnitude and direction of the third force is required so this is how the calculations can be done that's it from this video. Thank you for watching this video.